Recording in progress. Hey, Malin. How are things? <laughs> things are moving along. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Good. Yeah, let's give a couple of minutes and expect at least. No, I don't I don't get to meet with you guys anymore because it's so it's very late in the evening for me. Yeah, so we yeah we set up these. You now we have two meetings, Monday evenings, Seattle time, and then Thursday mornings. Yeah, and then this one conflicts with my normal cab forum meeting. Oh, this one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> uh. Do you work with Trevely a lot? With Trev? Yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we, yeah, she's, she's our TPM. Um, yeah, we are, we are, she provides us updates from the cab forum. Yeah, she spends her time on the TLS side, but I did see she was working on becoming an associate member of the code signing world. Which is good to hear. Yep. Hey, folks. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Um, I saw you slacked me somewhere. Will Roy be attending? Do you know? Yeah, we both just finished up another meeting, so I think he'll be in a moment. Okay, good. I made a suggestion on the Notary V2 channel. Um, being yeah, I'm looking at it. And, so, yeah, I so I would just say, I mean, part part of, I, I mean, maybe we can time box it, but I really feel like we need to at least cover somewhat of scope. If I could do nothing other than at least talk about the user stories, at least kind of show that off, I, I think that would be good. But, um, you know, there's a lot of work. Um, we also have timeline and, and, a, and a burn down to RC1. And so I think um, I don't want to just keep cranking away at user stories. If, we don't really have our priorities in scope right. Or more put, you don't want to focus on the features if they're not tied to the user stories we agreed to. Right, yeah, exactly. Like, so if you, you start working on, you know, stuff that isn't maybe the urgent priority um, or, or not in scope for RC1, then then we're just spending cycles in the area we may not need to, to do that. So, um, 
but yeah, so I, I, I know that, um, you know, we have, we have Ian here and we want to talk at least a little bit of time on that. Um, but I, I also would like to at least spend a little bit of time on, on scoping. Sure. Can, yeah, that sounds good. We, we can have a time box. Discussion. Yeah. If, if I get around 20 to 30 minutes at the end, because the, some of the spec PRs are, uh, at least one of them is big, and I think one of them can be closed quickly. I want to use some time here okay. we have, when we have Roy's bandwidth to review some of it. Okay. So I will, if it's okay, I mean, I will go ahead and just start off sharing the user stories doc, because I think this will try and help us to frame a higher level picture of what we're trying to ship in RC1. And then from there we can, you know, get that, that also kind of, by, by the fact of doing this, I think it'll help us uh, flush out things on the board as, as a result, um, which we could do not in this meeting. So, um, I'm going to share this right now. Do we want to cover the uh, EKU thing just to time box? Uh, yeah, I think the EKU thing, I mean, it can take up quite a bit of time. So I, I want to make sure we time box and have some time for that towards towards the, the end of this, perhaps. But I mean, I'd, I'd like to try and, yeah, I don't know. Let's, let's make sure we'll make, obviously, since especially since game square, we'll make sure we get to it. But um, we have time for it. But I, I want to do that first. That sounds that sounds good, Steve. I'm also waiting for Niaz to attend. He said he'll be a few minutes late. Okay. Yeah, just check the uh, attendees. So these are this is a summary of the potential um, RC one user stories. Um, so I don't I don't know if we want to just take a second to read these and then and then kind of. Is this a single page? This is it? Yeah, single page. Yep. Do you have the copy on there? The register? I mean, it's, it's I know it's less notary necessary specific, but it is core to our scenario. It's, it is notary specific. It's not notation code specific other than. Yeah, I think we're just scoping right now to just notation. So, but yeah, we can, we can lock down on these. Um, that'd be good. And then we can cover ORAS tangent related things. David, this is Samir. I have a high level feedback like uh, I was thinking by calling remote everywhere remote artifact remote registry we are limiting like do we have to use the word remote is there a reason to call remote registry remote artifacts well this is part of I mean this is part of the thing right um you know the the local the local thing would add it's it's separate sets of work and and flow right so like right now um you know the the remote stuff is a, is a scope and the local is a scope, so that's that's a good discussion point, right? So do you do you want to add remote and local as an RC one milestone? Just for clarity, I just wanted to tease out a set two pieces. There's the artifact is in the registry, and you're signing it while it's in the registry. You know, it's the the image is in the registry, and you're saying notation sign. And then it sends a you know a signature to that registry. The other is remote signing, is where the signature is actually not the key is not local. It's in a key vault. So we have two remote references. So we should just be clarify the both, as opposed to what I think we're teasing out here. What David was just discussing is the ability to have a signature. I sign. I build the image locally. I sign it locally, and then I push it push the signature and the image to the registry. Those are the local scenarios that I think we said we're not covering in RC1. Right, so yeah, exactly. So the local, because we don't have, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't have the that what you just mentioned, Steve, the latter, but I, I pull it locally, I sign locally, and then I push that sign thing remotely 
working right now. Yep. I okay. spilled coffee alert. I'm going away. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks, David. I think I have no more questions on this. Uh... Hey, Malin, go ahead. Yeah, I'll read back. Okay, went through the whole list. <clears throat> so, plugin management, uh, notation plugin list, that sounds good. Um, install, uninstall. Yeah, currently not in scope that this can get complicated because vendors, plugin vendors may distribute the plugin <clears throat> in different, different forms like a zip or a MSI yep. app. So it's debatable how much we want to support yep. the feature itself, uh, but currently not in RC1 scope. So we can discuss that separately. Uh, the push and pull. So currently sign has inbuilt support for push by default, it will push and notation verify will pull signatures. I'm questioning whether we want to solidify the notation pull push just for signatures. Uh, yeah, do, yeah, do, yeah, you're right. I mean, so it's it's a good point of do we, do we for RC1 pull this out as a fact of that we don't have the local the local signing thing there and the fact that you just mentioned, right? The sign and verify innately pulls and pushes behind the scene. Yeah. Uh, list signatures. Sorry, so we just to clarify. So we're we're not um, I'm okay with this. I was thinking about this last night when I made the issues. We're going to deprioritize notation push and pull. Yeah. Because notation verify is effective until we do the local series, notation verify is all we need. Yep. And notation sign does push. In Correct. Bit. So notation sign verify incorporate push and pull for local yep. scenarios because it's all focused on remote. Yeah. Perfect. Um, list signatures and inspect signatures. I think we'll look into the next level of detail, whether there's overlap, can we collapse? Just a suggestion. Um, notation key add is used for signing. I think we should just clarify in the description that notation key is used for signing, adding keys, configuring keys before you sign them. Whereas cert in alpha one was used for verification, adding trusted certificates. Um, for RC1, I don't think notation cert should be in scope because the, there's no standalone notation cert now. It has to be uh, it is related to trust policy and trust store. And we need to, I would say we need to define the CLI experience from scratch there. How do you want to do it? Like a single operation that works both with trust store, trust policy, maybe there are different operations for each one of them. So I would say we just drop cert or disable notation cert. It doesn't work with trust store right now. And I think the experience might be quite different than what notation cert provides, which, which is just adding a single certificate, trusted certificate to a JSON config file. We might need cert for signing also. Um, I think notation key add supports minus, minus key, minus cert. Then I think you said notation sign supports. So there's, so there's, yeah, there's, there is a sign with referencing a on disk some location key and cert and there are other variations of key but cert the way it's used currently is for verification flow not for time correct uh, and the trust policy trust store not sure why it's marked as red do you mean from a cli experience we don't have commands related to that yeah i think i think that was just kind of a question right? like in terms of that right yeah, this, so this functionality is implemented as in notation library supports it. CLI commands like verify will use the policy and store. There is no CLI based experience to edit it. We In RC1, we expect users to manually interact with the policy and store. Um, the policy is meant to be, it's JSON, it is, structured in a way that it, it is user friendly, at least for whoever understands the domain, the language of it. 
Uh, so it can be manipulated by CLI, by tools manually. Trusters, definitely in the long term, you don't want users to directly interact. We should provide a set of commands. So basically configurable in like a file system, the same directory type of thing if they want to. Otherwise they should not have to know about it as a result of doing the other things. Sorry, um, couldn't, couldn't hear. Couldn't hear you. So I was just, I was just saying, like, uh, you kind of the way you're thinking about it in RC one is, yeah, the trust pulse and trust store is there, um, yeah. but it's kind of behind the scenes and there's no CLI experience. But if you want to mess with it, you can. It, but it's just at a, you're gonna have to go to the computer yeah. kind of yeah. thing to. I think. Stuff. I think the important thing to understand here is that step is not optional. We don't ship with any default trust store or policy as of now. By default, everything is untrusted. So you need to configure these before you can successfully start verifying artifacts. And like shipping with some default trust stores like public CA, that, that is a future story. But the, this is how the experience works currently. Yeah, I totally agree with we don't ship with any default trust stores yet. Um, whether, you know, if the AWS CLI wants to drop a trust store and then Azure CLI wants to trust to drop a trust store for what we, you know, ECR public or MAR, that might be something we do as a company, but the yeah. notation CLI doesn't drop something by default. My only thing is I'm just, I'm very nervous about the usability. I think we need to make sure that people, not just one person, people are signing up to make sure we have very robust docs to explain with good samples for how somebody would author these. And two, the CLI, when it tries to parse the trust store policies, that it can give meaningful error information back, not unable to parse because there's a space or a dash or something in the wrong place. Like we really need to have some good testing and good use of uh, good validation on the, the documents. Yeah, I agree on that. Yeah, I think we just need to, I mean, flush that out. So like, I mean, I'm not saying we have to have a CLI experience either, but like, I, I agree with Steve, like, can, like, let's, let's not make people have to have some huge JSON file to try and, try and figure it out, right? If, if we can avoid that kind of thing. Um, yeah. uh, so, okay, so, any other feedback on like what you think we're missing or do you think we definitely should not be in scope that's in this list? I think we could quickly go through the, uh, the CLI spec baseline version with Steve uh, committed in notation. And we opened a bunch of um, issues yesterday to cover all the details, kind of like, if you remember, what I wanted to do was uh, commit the baseline. And by the way, I took liberty to order it alphabetically and directly commit. There's no, no content changing. I just did a sorting so that when I started doing individual PRs, they, the formatting was made sense. Um, so there's APR for login, which I saw some conversation come on that one. There's a separate issue that I covered because we were talking about moving to a different format for the CLI uh, for the authoring of the parameters and so forth, because we needed a format. Otherwise, we're going to have constant issues and devs changing the where a colon winds up, whether it's capital, capital letter or lowercase. I think Yi or Fenman accepted to take that one. But then there's individual issues for each of the commands. And then based on this, for instance, we could take the issue that talks about push and pull and move that out of RC1. And then we can just focus, here's the issue for notation plugin. Here's the issue for notation uh, sign or verify. So David, who's sharing? I am. Can you share, bring up the list of issues and just kind of what we talked about last night in the notations? Um, can you uh, yeah, so I kind of want to try, before we go there, I don't I can dive into the specifics. I want to try and, I think, synopsis kind of trying to close on I think what I'm hearing. Um, 
One is the that it seems like there's an agreement of kind of pulling out push and pull for RC1, um, not like deleting the code or anything, but just kind of like maybe disabling those options for now so until we fully bake out this, the scenarios. Is that right? Okay, I, I'll, I'll take silence as a, as a yes. Yes, couldn't find the new button. Okay, okay. And then um, the other thing which I, I don't know, we kind of touched on, but Samir brought up is do like, I, I, it sounds like we're saying also the local signing experience is also out of scope for RC1. Like the, I have an artifact local, I sign it local, and then I do some push it or something. Right, which so let's kind of be careful about what sign local means because again, I, I, we have to come up with better terminology. The, the test certificate might be local. Like I don't want, I want to be careful that somebody who wants to try a notation can have a certificate locally. It's not secure. It's not best practice. Blah blah blah. It says generate test certificate is the name of the CLI today, and they can do a sign. The key is okay. local. The artifact that they're signing has to be in the registry. We're not going to support a Docker build locally, Docker uh, notation signed locally. But the key, the private key, can be local to get people unblocked. Right. Okay. Does everybody so, agree with that wording? And then we can figure out that, that concept. Then we figure out how to word it appropriately. Yeah, that is right. We we can call it um, signing local artifact if you want. Or signing with a local key, maybe, because you're not signing a local artifact. Right. You're signing. Yeah. Yeah. You're always, the artifact is in the registry for now, but the key can be local. Yeah, the key can be local only for the test certificate, right? We're not recommending key to be local for production. Correct, correct. And I, I assume that matches what you guys are doing as well, right? Because yeah. technically you can, you can mount a key but you would still have access to it locally, so it's not really secure. Right? It's more like a, a public verif uh, sorry, a verification flow in, in a Kubernetes cluster. So I, I think we're both in agreement that we don't need, a, the only reason we have a local key is to get people started. But of all our production scenarios, we're recommending, I don't know how to strongly per word recommending, um, you use remote stores, remote, I think uh, remote key vaults. It depends, I think, in the scenario, right? Um, like signing on a laptop is something different than signing in like a secure container where you are, um, you know, uh, have more AC access controls in place or monitoring in place. So um, I don't know that the recommendation would be as black and white, um, but um, I, I think you would generally kind of call out like if you do um, locally, this is the thing. But it's it's this isn't important for um, the RC one though, right? Like I think we were considering just the this is something we'd want to have broader discussions on and and talk about more for RC two. Well, but I, that's why I want to be careful in RC one to make sure that you can have a, a private key local for to, so that you it's not so much you can have a private key locally. I don't want anybody having a dependency on either one of our Azure services. Sorry, either one of our cloud services, just to get started. I think we have talked about that with respect to the local key and encryption of the local key story, and we have the test, generate test key or test right. related to that. I, I want to uh, close on this discussion. I, just, okay. I, I think we have general okay. agreement. Just want to make okay. two call outs. The cache command is not in this list. Let's discuss that Monday with Shiva. I want to understand if it is critical for RC1. And on Monday, we can also talk about list and inspect. Uh, I think if we can, uh, everybody for that discussion can do a homework of what list and inspect do and how they are different, then we can have a good discussion on Monday. So, yeah, I think it's... Okay, yeah, that's fine. So um, in terms of putting these on, I would like to put these on the board. Um, and so I guess the, only, the question is, where do we want to put these on the board? Um, I, I guess the one place as an option that comes to mind is the notary project, um, because notary project office is kind of overarching tech scenarios. This kind of covers 
a lot of things. The other option, because these are notation commands, really, they come back to that, would be putting them in notation. Um, so I wanted to just see if we can agree on that and we can move on. The user might stories seem like their notary project uses Tori Grande. No, so the, the, the idea would be that they would go into like a format similar to what we have um, with this kind of epic view. Why don't I expand this? So, I'm, I'm asking a kind of a higher level question. So we have some specs that are on the notary project. Doesn't matter what language you implement them in, right? This, the signature format, for instance. There's other things that are specific to the notation CLI, such as the plugin spec. I think the plugin spec is not meant to be necessarily, we can re-argue it, but right now the, the plugin is based, is based on the notation CLI. If somebody wanted to write a, a notary client in Python or something, for whatever, right now we haven't said that a notation plugin would work with that uh, language. My question is these scenarios for sign, verify, and so forth, are those specific to the notation Go implementation or are those notary project scenarios. So if somebody wanted to go off and write one in Python, they would still write the code to match that scenario, that user story, the scenario list. So I think I think for us uh, right now, it's it's practical with within our bounds of the the repos that we have. Is 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 that saying that some external contributor could come in and do it in different languages in a different way? Sure. Um, but I just think for us, we need a way to track these, uh, these stories within, you know, our realm. Well, is our realm the notation CLI and notation go? I would say, I mean, yeah, I mean, like that, that's, that's what we're working towards right now. Right. I mean, we're not introducing it some is. other. I'm not saying that they, it's not exclusive of that. It just, is it narrowed to that? that that's all I'm asking. Could it be, could we put these user stories in the notation project and would that hurt us in some reason? I think these are notation specific. So, okay. project standards, notation being the reference implementation. We should okay. validate notation related specs in its own repo uh, issues, same way. Okay. You can have a reference, you can, in the notation project, we can probably have some place where it calls out this is notation, notation reference implementation, and these are this is the master list of specs. If somebody wants to refer, refer. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll, okay, so yeah, I'll just put them. That's totally fine. So I'll just put them in the notation, uh, and then you know some of these to get this work done, it's going to likely reference issues from notation go, notation for go, etc. Um, but we'll just. It, that's totally fine. We we can do that via this mechanism we have here, where we would just you know put it at a at a high level, and then have you know these different issues that are linked together. Um, so then that way we can track uh, is this you know user story complete or not um, across the different repos. Does that sound good? Yeah, I think that sounds fine. Okay, cool. All right, we can move on. Um, we want to go to uh, stop sharing. I think you had you said, Melinda, you had a couple like a couple tactical, like smaller type things you want for PRs to review. I needed at least Roy. Um, Steve, could you check if Roy will be available? I'll ping him. Yeah, but we we can continue with the EK discussion right now. Okay. All right. Actually, let me get Roy here for the EKU conversation. Is there something else we want to cover for a minute? Let me just see if he wants to pass because he shows red. Was there another quick hit on the agenda? Give me a moment. So you have, so you have, Melin, you have multiple uh, trust stores, custom verification level, verification plugin, and signing spec. Do, do you want Roy for both of those? No, I think I can. I can pull in one of those. We can we can talk about one of those. Uh, give me a second. Let me open that. Up. 
you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so right now waiting for Chiwe's approval, but if anybody else is interested, um, just highlighting that we talked about supporting custom verification level earlier, and that is implemented in this PR. I'm looking for two approvals on this one, so we can we can continue. So either Shiva's approval, Roy's, uh, Steve, we are free to review and provide feedback, but- I'll, I'll do the level I can. Okay. I think Quim's, Kim, Kim, I'm following a track. I think Kim's had some bandwidth and he's in Barcelona, but he had some bandwidth as well. Actually, that's a, uh, yeah, I did want to ask, is, is Kim gonna continue uh, contributing to notation? Um, technically he was supposed to go back to the other work he was focused on, but he's been showing up at a bunch of stuff. So, um, I would say that opportunistically he's available, but, um, technically he's not dedicated to this right now. He's, he's we, he, okay. he was on loan for a while, so he's got to go back to what he was doing. Okay. I'll ping him and see where he has bandwidth for. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I just, just be very tactical. He knows the plugin area. Yeah. Um, so that would be a great tactical way to pull them in. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight this. I don't think we can make progress on this without Shiva and uh, Roy. Oh, we can continue with the KU discussion if we want to. Cool. Now, is this specifically EKU discussion surrounding code signing EKU versus other EKU, correct? I mean, I think yeah. from a time boxing perspective, we were discussing what should notary use and whatever larger context that's relevant to that and the, the larger conversations you're having in the cab forum, just to give us context on how should we or shouldn't we think about code signing certificate EKUs in notary versus yeah. maybe some new things that might be evolving that's relieving would, some of the questions that people are asking related to the space. I would and nuance that even further, right? Um, it's not a question of what notary would use. We're not necessarily recommending that you use an EKU. Um, this was more a conversation around how notary would validate EKUs if they were present and what behavior should be expected. Right. Yeah. Um, that that sounds good. That's that's really good. Yes. Okay. So just to confirm, because I the part of this came up because somebody interpreted it as notary requires code signing, as opposed to what I think you're saying. The as that's why I just want to clarify. We don't recommend a code signing cert because the current scenarios technically don't fall into code signing elevated privileges kind of scenarios. Rather, if somebody happens to use one because we're not saying don't, this is the behavior that we would do in notary to go verify. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think we have a specific recommendation at this point from a notary perspective on whether or not to use EKUs, right? We haven't really discussed where EKUs would come into play, but as a result of using X509 certs, um, we are going to see EKUs and I think there is some validation that's expected for it, right? Yeah. And so when we see an EKU, we have a definition that if this EKU is for code signing, we're okay using it for notation. Um, if this EKU is for something like timestamping or email validation or email like, you know, signing or uh, TLS, then that's not an appropriate use within notation, right? Like that's really what the specification is saying. I yeah, this, from yeah. a scoping perspective, I'm yeah. just wondering how much do we need to do, especially in RC1, because I'm struggling a little bit on, on what I think in the end is on to something here, because it, specifically, I think what you, you definitely, and here's my, I, before I get on my soapbox about code signing EKU <laughs> and it's inappropriate use in so many, so many scenarios, because it is kind of falling into the catch all. It, and Niaz is bringing up a great point of, hey, were you gonna be using X509 here? Uh, it's likely that you will encounter EKUs. There are specific EKUs that you do not want to 
probably allow for, for usage here, such as server auth, aka TLS, or uh, email protection and S-MIME related certificates. Code signing certificate, I, I think David, Steve, like we've all had these conversations, Roy and I had had this conversation. It's okay, like it's a may, if we go back to the recommendation versus optional, if we encounter a certificate that has the code signing EKU on it, they may use it. But if it has no EKU, do you care? No, probably shouldn't care. Uh, if it has a timestamping EKU, that's very specific use case inside of Notary and, and, and this scenario for NV2, and that, that's only for timestamp counter signatures. We should not be trusting it for the actual signature uh, on the, the um, descriptor. That's my opinion. Now, code signing long-term? Um, man, okay, so if present, the value must contain code signing. Yeah, that, that should not be must, it should be may contain code signing, in my opinion. And it must not contain uh, any extended key usage. I would say that's not true. Um, because you, you probably will run into some that have any extended key usage. The server auth, email protection, and timestamp, that's all completely valid. You should not or must not allow those. That, that's my opinion. Now, for code signing long term. Oh, that's not what it says here, right? It says, like, somebody needs to, oh, can, can, I, don't, I don't want to be careful. Ian, can I sign you up for doing a PR to, to clarify some of this? Uh, yeah, I can make some, some changes. Because anybody else is going to try to interpret what you're saying. And Melinda, and yeah, if, if one of you feel like you can do that, great. But I feel like there's some detail here I want to make sure we don't lose. I think, yeah. yeah. I think what yeah, Ian is saying that. is something we're aligned with. Um, and I think this is one where like the part where it may be worth the discussion is around the any extended key usage. Um, that's the yeah. one place I think where we may have some um, um, differences in how we view them. And I think hashing that out helps, but I think overall this makes sense. Um, Ian, why don't you comment on this and see sort of like, you know, um, what the extended key usage, any extended key usage things you have, and that's something then we can um, kind of weigh in on. Um, but I think what you described is what we have in, in, in principle described here. Um, the only thing I think that may change is like, you know, should it be a must versus may, and should we have the any extended key usage move in? But um, that's something I think we can close in an issue discussion. Yeah, with any extended key usage too, I, I'm, I'm more than, I'm less passionate about that at all. Uh, being, if you want to exclude it, totally fine. Uh, so the, uh, I'm sorry. the, you know, the code signing one in particular, having it as a may initially is probably the right thing to do. We should, I, I've been trying to bend some, some groups together to figure out what is a better EKU for this type of content, non-executable code or non-software. Because I commonly, I see it too oftenly used for signing data objects that have no relation to code execution. And thus the, the people who are obtaining that code signing certificate and putting it out in less secure environments and implementations uh, are putting their, their themselves at risk uh, in terms of you know, somebody misusing that code signing certificate to sign something that they shouldn't really be signing. Yeah, but I think that the the way we were kind of approaching it more was based around like you know what are the validation uh, mechanisms that are currently tied to these EKUs today um, like you know from an object signing perspective the assertions that you know um, a CA is probably looking at 
um, are similar to what they would be looking at for a code signing perspective. I think what probably likely changes once we have this, you know, better guidelines in CAP forum is how do you actually use the certificates? But um, we haven't really gone that far, right? I think with code signing, there's the good new kind of like requirement coming in that these now need to be in HSM or sort of like tokens. I think that's coming out in November. Yeah. Um, that's a good next step, but I think there's, I agree with you that over time, this is going to evolve. And so um, I anticipate we can add more EKUs and I think softening that to may contain um, kind of gives us a lit, like opportunity to kind of expand this list over time. Um, but I think in that's, that's one where I think, you know, it, it less changes the behavior of the notation client and it's more about where we see the spec going long-term. I think those are, that's really where this discussion feels like it's headed for me. Yeah, and I, I really want to allow for for enterprises and for anybody out there who's using this to also apply their own custom private EKUs as well to create further security boundaries on what they trust or do not trust. So I, I definitely don't want to go in a, in a way of saying only trust this EKU. Uh, I like the idea of don't trust these ones, but giving we need to be able to allow for flexibility of future EKUs for sure. Steve, I see you highlighting key usage. That was me. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. that's me. Oh, David. I, I just I, I just have that question. I just I want to check to see this is a non-EKU thing, but it's currently one that we're requiring in code and in the spec yeah. is yes. the position for digital signature. Do you think that's that's a good position or not? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Awesome. And bit positions that should must not be set. Yep, key cert signing, krill signing. There may be some other ones that we may want to consider, but those for sure must be there. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, but yeah, then, I'm Steve, with Ian on these first on the hands, and then I, I do think we should probably try and move on. It feels like good progress here. I think Steve is Steve. We can okay. go. Yeah, do you have I was just gonna say, like, I just want to figure out if this is something that we could hunt till later, because code signing starts is, is like the epiphany of what people start poking at of what's wrong with X509. Today, it's expensive, it's elitist, it's just like, we hope the cap from and so forth are going to solve that. But if we don't need EKUs today, um, I, I just love to not have a part of RC1. I would disagree in that I think it's a part of like a security check, right? Um, if an EKU is defined, um, then you need to kind of understand why that EKU is defined and what it's used for. Um, I think softening the language and allowing more flexibility over time is where I would lean in um, and say, this is what we expect traditional behavior to be. Um, I think Ian brings up a good point if organizations are defining their own EKUs where how do we enable notation not to block those. Um, but we definitely want to prevent um, things like, you know, a server auth certificate from being used in notation. Like, I think that's table stakes. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so just to add there, we're not blocking any extra EKUs. We're just saying that for this must contain, this must not contain, you can add any, any extra EKU if you want. So spec is not talking even talking about any extra EKU. So custom EKUs if organization had. Okay. Well, I think if it says must, I think it, it kind of implies oh, it's a, you can't change it's anything an array. else. It's an array must contain. It's an array basically. I thought That's we were the, saying we, do, we will not support certain EKUs and we're so it's saying uh, you need code signing plus any extra EKU if you want to do that so that's the language uh, like that's the interpretation I had like it should contain code signing plus any extra EKUs if you have any and uh, if you have for your organization I think that Pratesh would would kind of like say that you have to put in code signing plus another EKU um, if you want to have just an own EKU that you have defined this would prevent that from happening right yeah. Um, and I don't think that should necessarily be the right behavior. So I think kind of softening this to may contain, it makes sense to me. Um, and um, the must nots definitely should stay must not. Um, but I think that's that's where I would change this to say may contain. Wait, so for the must nots, are we saying we must not have like the server, well, the two, the server one? Yeah, server auth and SMIME or email SMIME. protection. So you might want to put client auth on there as well. So if somebody presents a cert that is those two, do we block? 
Yes. Yeah. I think we're, it seems like we're, I think, I feel like we're all kind of coalescing to an agreement here, so which is awesome. So I yeah, I just wanted to make sure that if we do, great, because I wasn't sure if what Pratesh was saying was agreeing with that. So we're just making sure. Now, what Pratesh was saying <laughs> is you're saying, oh, it, I want code signing and code signing is the min, and then anything ad additional to code signing. As long as it's not server auth and it's not email protection, we're all good, is what I got from what Pratesh was saying. That is that is correct. That's correct. Yeah. And, and what we want to go is what Niaz was, was saying, let's soften it to May on the code signing. Uh, and then anything else, but definitely not, do not allow server auth and email protection. I think I, I still want to debate on that that specific point. Uh, first being, we can start with a more restrictive language and we can relax that in future. That That is a non-breaking change, but we cannot start from a may and then change it to must. So that is one thing to consider. The second thing is usage of code signing for object signing. Uh, I'm asking these because they, these same conversations will happen even on the PR. We're not yet fully convinced why we should we should have the core signing as may like for example if you if you see uh, like object signing you have installers which can contain a mix of executable code and supporting artifact it may have it may have manifests it may have s bombs images which you could technically call as objects uh, same with uh, images here and s bombs images mostly are in most cases considered to be executables. Uh, there could be other type of artifacts and we have S-bombs, et cetera, supporting artifacts for this code artifact. So with kind of that parallel or analogy, I think the code signing is still appropriate, but I, I would like to know more from you Ian, why, in which cases it would be restrictive or in which cases it would be a, something related to degrading trust or misuse. Yeah, it's specifically, um we've been looking a lot at where code signing certificates specifically the eku is being used uh and not needed uh for instance and we have in our in our os we have ci policies and ci policies that are supplemental user created that allows you to further constrict uh, what you trust in, in your device. This is for an app control scenario. It, it doesn't require the code signing EKU. And in fact, we, we say do not use the code signing EKU because that certificate that you're using to sign that CI policy shouldn't be the certificate now that you want to trust for the signing of all of your, your application code. That could be something that you, you distribute or allow access to inside of your CI CD pipeline versus the policy signing certificate that you use. That should be isolated and only allowed to be used by your enterprise admins. Uh, commercially, I see it like MSI is a good example of, um, it's a installer that does it contains executable code that gets installed, but it's not actually executable code. It, it's more or less a, a manifest uh, of what's going to be installed. That we, we've even looked at and said, we probably shouldn't be using code signing. We should be using uh, like some kind of data signing EKU that we we come up with that that's separate. I know in talking to Apple folks, they do, they've made some segregation of this in, in their world in particular, because they also saw a similar problem. I'm also trying to get away from the common use of code signing EKU because it does carry a lot of weight in terms of getting one publicly trusted. Uh, and that may not be the the thing that you want and it's and it's right now 
the only platform that pretty much trust publicly trusted code signing is is Windows with some bit of, of Java or Oracle's world trusting that as well. But they're starting to, or they've stopped participating in the in the public forums. So I, I for something that we want to have complete cross platform, I, I'm scared of using the, the code signing EKU, especially by definition, it's for software. And, and a lot of the like S bombs, it's not software. It's, it's a document about software. I think that um, I, I think we're, um, I would say let's kind of like, you know, um, in the interest of time, because we can start with must and move to may, um, can we keep like a must for RC1, um, have a broader discussion around where are the other EKUs that aren't mentioned here, where do they fall? Um, and then kind of change this to AMA and define that behavior for RC2. I, honestly, I think going from a, starting with a must and going to a may is harder. Uh, going Or going, from a may to a must is much easier because you can go to a you can go to a must when you get broad adoption of it. Well, I, it's it's more about like the breaking change aspect of it, right? Like we can always relax validations and code and things that were working before will work versus if we are allowing not, um, non um, code signing keys to then we start validating that down the road. I think those validations will start failing. So I think it's more from the user experience that we're thinking about um, what's the breaking That's change true. going to look like. Basically from RC1 release candidate, we don't expect major breaking changes toward in, in future RC and then GA. So this would be a breaking change if we change it from May to must, but must to May is not a breaking change. Uh, and, and specifically for like our own, uh, for container signing, so Steve knows this, our own, uh, we've we've already ruled out using code signing EKU because for the certificates that we're issuing, that PCA that we're issuing off that chains to a root, that we don't even want that root to be enabled for code signing. Our code signing roots are completely separate. Are and you the, using the a PCAs. different EKU or are you avoiding EKUs? We're, we're using a private EKU right now for our own, but I, I wish I, I wish there was an easy path to get a new ISO standard EKU, like dot 30 on the, on the ISO um, standard, but it, it's, it's not, from what I've understood, it's not that easy. Um, <laughs> but we, we created a EKU for uh, supply chain data signing generically. And so we use that to sign S bombs, you know, conformance claims to uh, container descriptors. Uh, the code that is actually, you know, inside the executable code uh, for like Windows or for our Mariner OS, those kind of things can use the code signing EKU. But the descriptors, no. So a couple of follow-up questions. So if we remove this or make it a may, that means we don't really have any expectation. It, it, it's pretty much an open ground other than the kind of the block list of currently any KU, TLS, et cetera. Uh, like we said, like standardization is also gonna take time. I think the other aspect is based on the detailed description you gave where, where you don't want the usages mixed, et cetera. It really seems that based on the content type or artifact type, there are certain EKUs that we may want to enforce. And it's predominantly container images, S bombs, et cetera, are supporting artifacts. So there may be a case for depending on the type of artifact. And again, there's no standardization here, but we, we can think about it based on the type of artifact you the, the tool or the standard say these are the expected EKUs. But I, I don't expect us to get get a standardization for that either. But it the problem that you described seems to point that that that, that is a potential solution. Hmm. 
because you have to give what what we are doing with this is we are saying because we want to sign as bomb which is not really code artifact we are diluting the eku for the cases where it is a code artifact yeah and yeah that and in descriptor was also one when we were looking at this it's a it's a manifest of a manifest that leads to container or or packages of of executable code but by the time they become executable code, the signature is no longer, it, it's been decompressed. That's right. So it's not You're, the same thing. Like the confidential computing stuff, we might go down at EKU because it would actually have some way to, we haven't, I'm not even sure if we figured all these details out, but at even signing the Windows image, we're saying today until we know how to get it all the way down to that, it's signing the binders that actually get loaded into memory would not be an EKU. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's right. And code and signing EKU to be fair. Not not code signing EKU. We've defined a different EKU for that <laughs> for our own. And, and God, I wish I could go, hey, here's the EKU that we use. And everybody as part of the note, I wish notary had its own arc that we could just say, or Docker had its own arc that we could say, and hey, we expect this EKU for this content type, which is you know guy. descriptors. It's on the cap farm. Now, it's not the cap form that defines that, oh. right? So it, it's, yeah. <laughs> okay, so just for scoping, because we only have five minutes left. I just, I wanted to, again, we, were, we keep on talking about how to narrow RC1 so we can get it done last month. Um, what can we do to narrow things for now and expand as we have more feedback, more usage, more feedback from these the actual usage scenarios? So Ian will take the ownership of making a PR to that spec. Yeah. Is there anything that we can relax in the amount of code we're doing on validations on some of these things? I think let's- like Strawberries got stolen. I think let's keep it must till we close on this discussion. You can open the PR. I think I, I think the the discussion was useful. We we have much more context than we had before. Uh, it's a straightforward change. I think we should push or focus more on the PR and related discussion. Document the reasons and get into agreement. Then then we can make the code change pretty fast. It's a simple change, but I, I don't want to change the implementation right away. Uh, that, that's my feedback. Do we have implementation that's already doing full validations of the EKU? I think we have PRs in progress right now. But if it's not merged, I'm just saying, can we have focus? I think current one checks for code signing one. I think we have that already in place in uh, the release which we have alpha release. I know there's one check for sure, and I linked that in the issue of for digital, the digital signing bit, but that wasn't on the EKU. Can some, somebody share a code link if they have that handy? I mean, I can try either, to find way, that. Uh, either ways, I would I would say let's let's focus on getting the spec ironed out. Let's prioritize the spec change and debate around it. The core change is simpler. Ian, yeah, do you think you can get that? It sounds like the PR is pretty straightforward. Is it something you can queue up today? Ian, you're muted. Oh, I, oh, Ian, you're muted. Did you guys hear my question? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Um, today, 
probably not be able to get to it, but I'll try, if not today, early tomorrow morning. Sounds good. I think what would be the first really, thing on my, really my useful plate. is, uh, Ian, the context that you gave in the call, if we can summarize that, the, I think the PR change is simple. I think the context is more important. If you can document that in the PR, that, that would be great. Awesome. Thank yep. you. So we're at time. Anything else we'll just pick up on Monday? Monday? Monday, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get through my agenda items. I'll ping uh, Rai separately, Shiva, and try to get progress on those. Great. Okay. Thanks for having I mean, look, look, these calls. If this is the kind of discussion we want to have in these calls, so this is good where we have interaction. Um, just getting, I think the getting the user scenarios loaded will also help us focus on which PRs we work on asynchronously, you know, through the, the normal process. But, so appreciate everybody's time and flexibility. Cool. Thanks, folks. Bye. Thanks, folks.